Hello. In this assignment, you'll build more complex objects by putting together simpler objects as the building blocks. In the simple objects assignment, you defined a point class, which represents a point object. Before you knew about classes, you could have represented a point as an x and a y coordinate variables separately. But you realized that you can package those together in a point class so that that way each point object has its own x and y. The first problem this week is creating what's called a path. A path is a sequence of x, y points. There are lots of ways that you could represent the information of all of the coordinates in your path. If you weren't going to use objects at all, you could do this. You could define two int arrays, each representing the sequence of coordinates for either x or y. Or, if you've declared a point class, you could have an array list of point objects called path. And in that case, each element in the array list is a single object that has both coordinates as members. What we're going to do is the same thing that we did when we made the point object. Instead of keeping variables that represent our information, we encapsulated those variables as fields in a new class that defines a new object. So, instead of keeping a variable that's an array list of points, we're going to encapsulate that list of points in a new object called path. That way we can create several paths and treat each path as if it's a single object. But inside that object is a list of points, and inside each point is an x and a y variable. This might seem needlessly complicated. Why do we do it? I'm going to tell you right now, but it will take the entire year's course to justify to the point where you actually believe that it's important, probably. The reason to make path its own object is because we want to make reusable software components. So if we need to use a path in the future, or if someone else needs to use a path, they have an easy way of using it without needing to understand how it works. If we represented the path as an array list of points, that seems simple for us to think about now when it's the only thing we're thinking about. But if we're trying to integrate it in a much larger, more complex program, we would have to think about how that array list of points would fit together with everything else that we had programmed. If a path is its own object, we no longer need to understand how that object works internally. All we need to do is understand how to use it, which is usually much simpler. So it's a technique for managing the complexity of large programs. When you break them into separate reusable components, they're easier to think about and combine, and they're also a heck of a lot easier to debug when things go wrong. Here's an example of creating a path without ever defining the object. So I've got an array list of points, which I create and it starts empty. Then one at a time, I create new points and add them to my list. And as you can see by the coordinates, I'm going in a square. I'm going from 0, 0 out to, or I guess up to 0, 10, over to 10, 10, down to 10, 0, and then left again to 0, 0. And then I'm running a method that I wrote here called length of path that will calculate the total length of the path. And when I run it, as you can see, it says length of path is 40. This is an important pattern that we'll be using a lot. The pattern is you're going to loop over a list of things, do some calculation, and add the result into an ongoing tally of the sum of everything you've done so far. Let's look and see what that looks like here inside length of path. Here is the normal pattern for looping over a list. I starts at zero and goes to the end, only I've subtracted one because I'm not gonna visit the last location. The reason why is because I'm going to get the point at location i, and also the one right after it, the point at location i plus one. So I'm getting every pair of points. 
Then I ask each point to calculate, uh, to calculate its distance to the next point in the path, and I add that into an ongoing sum called length. Length starts at zero, and each time through the loop, we add in the next distance from a point to the next point in the path. When we're done, we've added in all of the distances from one point to the next, and that represents the length of the entire path, which we then return. You're going to reorganize the code to look this way. So you create a path object using a constructor, and the path starts out as empty with no points. Then you can run an add point method where you don't need to create a point object in the tester because the person using the path object doesn't care how these points are represented, so they just want to give the coordinates. They don't want to have to be forced to create their own point object. So we add a sequence of points, and then we ask the path to calculate its own length. So the getLength method is no longer the responsibility of the person using the path object. The, path, the get length method is now the responsibility of the programmer who makes the path object. You can do this by defining a path object similar to your other objects. We can have a single field that's the array list of points. In the constructor is where you create the empty list. And then you can have a series of other methods. I just copied and pasted the length method from the other implementation, but there's some really important differences. We said once, but I think you may have forgotten, static methods are methods that don't use objects to run them. In this case, we want the path object to be running this method, so we no longer want this to be static. We also want to make it public, because private would mean that only the path class itself could run this method, but we want our client class to be able to run that method. Lastly, it doesn't need to take an input that's the list of points. Now that it's defined inside an object, the list of points that it wants to use is a field of the object, so the method doesn't need the input anymore. I'll let you implement the other methods to complete